Don't forget, you can reach the latest episode of Potomac Watch anytime. Just ask your smart speaker, play the opinion Potomac Watch podcast. That is, play the opinion Potomac Watch podcast. From the opinion pages of the Wall Street Journal, this is Potomac Watch. Welcome back to Potomac Watch. We're going to shift gears. We talked a little bit about Trump world, and obviously almost all the talk this week was about the end of the Trump trial. We're going to get more on that in coming days as the judge issues jury instructions. But less attention is going to another trial that is starting soon, and that is the beginning of Hunter Biden's in a federal courtroom in Delaware over federal felony gun charges. That trial is due to begin June 3rd. That is the week after next. Just this week, a three-judge panel on an appeals court rejected Hunter's lawyer's team to delay the trial. They are apparently going to lodge that with the full appeals court, although it seems unlikely to succeed. So here we go. And we also got some news this week via filings that this could be pretty ugly. The prosecution has suggested it's going to call up to three of Hunter's past romantic partners, including his ex-wife, Kathleen Brule, Hallie Biden, the widow of his older brother, Bo, who Hunter had a relationship with, and possibly London Roberts, the Arkansas woman with whom he had a child. There's a little guesswork here because they aren't specifically named in the court filings. So reporters are having to do some guesswork based on the details lodged with those filings. Prosecution also hinted at what they would talk about, which I think was a real wake-up call for those not paying attention about how deeply personal this trial is going to be. Because remember, Hunter is accused here of signing a federal form to obtain a firearm in which he attested that he wasn't using illicit substances and that he wasn't a drug addict. So if you think about it, the entire goal of the prosecution is to prove that he was, in fact, an addict. And how do you do that? You relate all the horrible instances of his behavior that suggest or prove addiction. Kate, based on this and on these filings that we saw this week, what are we likely to hear about in this trial? And tell me if I'm wrong, but isn't there a pretty big possibility, given the closeness of the Biden family, that some of these anecdotes and stories are going to wrap in everybody, possibly even President Biden? It's certainly possible. I mean, this is going to unfold right as Americans are really tuning into the election rather closely. It's going to feature uh, details from Hunter's famous laptop, which the Biden crowd went to incredible lengths to try to discredit. And now we have more firm evidence that nothing on the laptop was tampered with and that there are embarrassing details on it that extends not only to Hunter's personal behavior, but possibly even the, what he was talking to his dad about at the time. These are going to be ugly scenes, and I don't think it will all be easily written away as Hunter has tried to do as all consequences of his struggle with addiction. So I do think this has the potential to be a very ugly trial. And when you, you know, we're having this competing courtroom campaign, but I think the public can quite easily grasp what's being discussed at Hunter's and keep in mind what's going on in the Trump trial is whether Trump falsified a business record in service to a second crime, which is perhaps campaign finance violation. I mean, it's just a completely different universe as the public tries to evaluate the seriousness of the charges and what they really reflect on the defendants. So I think this could really prove to be an ugly scene for the Bidens, and one they've obviously tried to avoid. The prosecutors also included some text messages and emails in these court filings that were meant to give a flavor of some of the things that these witnesses will attest to. An example of what we're talking about here, one witness said she had, quote, observed the defendant using crack cocaine frequently every 20 minutes except when he slept, end quote. The prosecutors also said the government intends to show videos and photographs of the defendant smoking crack or drug paraphernalia in videos and photographs backed up to the defendant's Apple iCloud account or laptop or sent in the defendant's messages. So that's a little taste. Manet, just a little bit more on this laptop point. As Kate was saying, this was the laptop that Hunter dropped off at a repair shop in April of 2019. Pieces of it began circulating before the 2020 election and by the New York Post and then others, it was roundly denounced as Russian disinformation. Joe Biden in his debates with Donald Trump suggested as much too, cited these intelligence analysts, prior former intelligence analysts saying that too. 
And yet here we are now with federal prosecutors, in fact, blasting the Hunter legal team's claims that this is somehow a conspiracy theory and writing instead, quote, the defendant's laptop is real. It will be introduced as a trial exhibit and it contains significant evidence of the defendant's guilt. Manet, I call this the triumph for those of us who wrote the truth of the laptop, but isn't it also true that Hunter Biden's team continue to still suggest it's bogus, they've been filing lawsuits, and will this put the controversy over the laptop to rest? All of the former intelligence officials and all of the members of the press who leapt to denounce the laptop as fake did so with exactly one goal in mind, which was to suppress it, hopefully permanently, but at least temporarily, during the process of the 2020 presidential election because they didn't want it to be an issue that would sway voters against voting for Joe Biden. And they seem to succeed in that, unfortunately, for the American people. They did attach a reputation of ambiguity around the laptop's provenance that made voters at least put it out of mind temporarily, despite the fact that there was every sign that it was authentic from the very beginning. Of course, as time went on, a lot of these publications were forced to do more thorough investigations and couldn't continue denying the authenticity of the laptop. And you've seen some of them backtrack. But of course, from Hunter Biden's perspective, defending himself in this criminal case, he's been given the ammunition by those early criticisms of the intelligence officials and of the press to be able to say that this was all a smear. And so he's going to continue going on with that line, despite the fact that just about everyone, including David Weiss, who's actually looked thoroughly at the laptop, its origins, the store in Wilmington where it was dropped off, understands that it's completely authentic at this point. And so Hunter Biden might be the last person who's continuing to suggest that it's fake, but there isn't really anything to suggest that that has any credibility to it at this point. Yeah. One of the things prosecutors noted in this filing is that they're using information that was extracted and authenticated by their own analysts, but also that a bunch of it has been backed up by other witnesses and emails that they have obtained separately. We're going to take one more break. When we come back, Joe Biden's struggling with inflation. And now in another attempt to get on top of that, he's announced he'll be releasing gasoline from a Northeast Reserve. Will it help? Will anything help? When we come back. Welcome back. I'm Kim Strassel here with Potomac Watch, sitting with my colleagues, Kate Batchelder, Odell, and Mene Ukwebirua. Joe Biden's been out trying to shore up his poll numbers with specific demographics, most recently on a, a tour with outreach to African-American voters. But we also got the news this week that he's releasing one million barrels of gasoline from a Northeast Reserve. That sale is going to come from storage sites in New Jersey and Maine and go out in batches. The Energy Department flat out said that this was designed to lower costs for American families and consumers in time for summer driving season, in particular for July 4th. Now, Biden has tried something like this in the past by releasing oil from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. This move is a little different in that this Northeast Reserve has long been an object of criticism for Republicans who think it's costly and lambasted Obama for creating it without what they said was necessary congressional authority. And so Congress did pass a mandate as part of its spending bill earlier this year and ordered the reserve to be drained. That means at least Biden has authority to do this. But again, Kate, we've seen this with the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. Is this release likely to do anything for gas prices or get Biden any credit? No, I mean, I think this is a pure ploy and pure political cover for some of the other economic issues that are continuing to dog Biden. I don't know if you've been as amazed as I am at the number of proliferating pieces we've seen saying it's so amazing that voters don't understand how great the Biden economy actually is. And these keep coming. And I think what is really going on is that Americans do understand and that while inflation may be slowing, prices remain just extraordinarily high across all sorts of things, especially but just groceries as someone who has to make two pounds of chicken uh, to feed my family for an evening. So I think that elevated price level is continuing to make Americans unhappy, and it's not going to be dealt with by a one-time depleting of this reserve that probably will make barely a dent in gas prices anyway. 
I think it's just a pure political um, sop at this point to try to shore up his economic problems. They're deeper than that, and they're, they're so much contributing. I mean, voters know how much Biden spent on so many different things, from electric vehicle tax credits to the infrastructure bill, the end of the COVID spending. I mean, he's done this huge spending blowout, which produced a large inflation and not the results they were expecting. And now he's got to defend that record. And I think there's other things going on. I mean, the post-COVID problems in the public schools are making more people say, gee, maybe I have to pony up for private school. I mean, I know I'm getting off the, the core energy subject here, but my only point is that Biden's economic problems are a lot broader than just gas prices. And I don't think that this SOP is going to do much to change that most Americans understand that. Yeah, and it doesn't seem as though even this specific action will have much of a consequence. Some of the stories cited a government accountability report from 2022, noting that if there were reserves released from this storage, these storage facilities, it would likely have only a minimal effect on gas prices. But Manet, it does raise the question of what else can he do when it comes to the economic narrative? He tried flogging Bidenomics. Americans are buying that that actually was something that was a success. He has tried saying, and his supporters are now saying, as Kate noted, that the sky is blue when it's actually pitch black. So Americans aren't buying that either. The White House keeps reassuring that there's still time for the inflation picture to turn around before election. But that window may already be closed. So that raises another idea. Our colleague Dan Henniger had a great column this week that points out the other strategy that is now being employed by the White House in a column titled Joe Biden's 2024 Election Bribes. He's making the case that Biden's just flat out using the federal treasury to buy votes. Do you see evidence of that? What's going on here? The student loan forgiveness that Biden has been undertaking can't really be read in any way other than that, especially if you look at the poll numbers and see how much he's struggling among young voters. He knows that that's one of the biggest concerns among young people in today's economy who are burdened with a lot of student loan debt. And despite the fact that the Supreme Court intervened to block his one big swipe at waving away billions in student loan debt altogether, he has been able to piece together tons and tons of forgiveness. And I think there was just a recent announcement last week of the latest big tranche of that. And so that's the most explicit way that Biden has been doing that, trying to offset the pain of the current economy by using the federal treasury to simply direct money to groups who he wants to show up for him at the polls. The problem for Biden is that the best way to boost the economy is obviously through supply side policies like allowing more energy to be produced in America in a way that would restrain gas prices and also limiting the amount of government spending that's going into the economy in a way that's not going to oversaturate demand. But it's far too late for that with only a few months before November. There's no chance that any kind of change in policy in that direction would be able to affect the economy before the election. And obviously, Biden wouldn't do that even if there was a chance to do it because he's completely beholden to the left wing on his economic policies and shows no desire or ability to actually triangulate and take a step in a constructive direction. Uh, And so he's trapped himself into the spot of only being able to offer these sorts of piecemeal giveaways, and we'll see if it has any impact on the election. Kate, one of the things that troubles me about these moves and this vote buying, as it were, quite aside from the bad policy and the amount of money, is that it's very cleverly being put into play in the run-up to the election. And the timing here is notable because I think a lot of these moves, we've written about this, Manet just mentioned that the Supreme Court brushed him back on student loans, but obviously we now have a new round and he's claiming a different source of authority for it. These all seem to be timed to ensure that even though they are highly questionably legal, there isn't going to be time for anybody either to lodge a court appeal or lodge a lawsuit or challenge him in any way that you could stop this or roll it back before election day comes around. I think that's right. And I think that's certainly part of the cynical strategy. But I think the risks of it are potentially underrated. I think the Biden crowd may be really underestimating the backlash it might receive at some of these moves. I mean, take student loans. 
for everybody that it makes happy. Some of these voters were already in Biden's camp anyway. And it really infuriates and alienates Americans, for instance, who didn't go to college, who paid their way through college by working, who went to a college that they would have preferred to go to a different one because it was less expensive. I mean, all of them are not getting this get out of jail free card that some folks with expensive graduate degrees, frankly, are getting. So I think that has a real potential to boomerang. I'd also add the same thing about the um, Biden bribe to try to decriminalize marijuana ahead of the election, which seems to be a pure sop play to voters. I think there is also an increasing public backlash against that as a policy. In Virginia, for instance, Glenn Youngkin, the Republican governor, recently vetoed a bill on marijuana. And I think that's because it reflects that there is a kind of a suburban right and left consensus that the dangers of marijuana are underappreciated and that simply letting more of it flow through society hasn't been the net positive that its proponents claimed it would be. So I guess I would add the bribes are certainly quite naked and impressive, but they also are pretty corrosive. And I think uh, some voters, uh, it may motivate the, not the voters he's looking to motivate. Good point. And we will have to watch. Thank you, Kate. Thank you, Monet. We thank our listeners for being here with us. We are here every weekday. We will be back tomorrow for our Friday edition. You can email us at pwpodcast at wsj.com. And if you like the show, hit the subscribe button.